three DAG, the intestines cannot easily rebuild these molecules back into fat. Since they are hydrophilic, these molecules are filtered into the bloodstream and transferred into the liver immediately. So less germinated oil is stored as a body fat compared to regular vegetable oils. Why liver is so important? Especially because liver is the main place for the conversion of ALA, omega-3 fatty acid, into docohexa, sorry, I have to read this, docosahexaonic acid, DHA, which is actually our brain fuel. A human brain needs 4.6 milligrams of DHA per day. And we must understand that the conversion rate of liver is 8 to 10 times higher than that of the brain. Because, of course, you can always eat fish oil and it gets to your brain. But uh, for the segment of vegans and vegetarians, this is, of course, not, not acceptable. As Paul Benheim said, there is lots of uh, heavy metals in, uh, in the fishes al already. So why should we do it? So the germinated oil, in general, provides you an excellent source of omega-3 alpha-linoleic acid, which, as it penetrates through bloodstream very easily, directly to, to liver, this ALA is then an immediate agent for the conversion into DHA, which is, of course, again, omega-3 fatty acid, but it's, but it's what our brain uses as a fuel. The second main role of the liver is the synthesis of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP is often called the molecular unit of currency. ATP transports chemical energy within cell metabolism. So can you, for instance, imagine a sports performan performance gel or drink based on emulsion made from the DHE, DHE hemp oil? So now we'll talk about the results, what we have so far. We've been working on this project for um, 18 months now. We have uh, tried the, de the process development with various suppliers. All of them failed for some reason, only for one we are now working with. And we already have some uh, uh, results and I'm happy to announce that the full product line or range will be will be launched officially in uh, exhibition food ingredients Europe in November in uh, Germany. So we are working closely with nutrition experts on industrial scale germination of hemp seed and its further processing. We have used 100% Canadian certified organic hemp seed of phenol variety for our trials. The seed is being provided by our partner Hemp All Canada. We have done not two, but already more production runs. We have processed almost one ton of seeds. The average germination period was 24 hours. The wet seeds have been dried down to 7% moisture content. We have produced cold pressed oil and uh, milled press cake, which is essentially 33% protein powder. So there is plenty of samples for you. This is the flour. And this is the hemp oil from germinated hemp seed. And of course, the, these multiple trials have enabled us to fine tune the germination timing because it really affects the final product quality. It's not so easy. So, what were the major changes we have uh, demonstrated? We have to understand that when the seed comes into contact with water, it wakes up. And when it wake, wakes up, it needs the energy. So in the first hours of germination, the sugars get consumed and long chain carbohydrates get converted into simple sugars. So, for, is that, for instance, when we take what we call a hemp flour, it usually contains two grams of simple sugars for 100 grams. In this product, we have only 
measure 0.1 gram of simple sugars. Also, protein bundles get broken down into oligopeptides or even amino acids. Active enzymes further assist quality digesting, so biological value maximizes while keeping the total protein content unchanged. So, again, the lab result showed that in, in this product there is 33 grams of protein per 100 grams of, of product. So, only the inner structure of the protein got changed. And, and especially, hemp is known for being a globular, for having a globular uh, protein structure. So it's a, a very, very complex molecule, like adestine and albumin, and germination process breaks down this big molecule into small, small pieces, so you can more easily digest. Even though general digestibility ranking of hemp protein is about, is about 90%. Here, our scientist says that this is almost 100% biologically available. But, I think this is the most exciting part, at least for us, the next few slides. The table provided demonstrates the changes of fat composition in sprouted hemp seed oil compared to regular Canadian hemp seed oil. So we have different fatty acids here, regular cold-pressed Canadian oil, 90% of that product is phenola, and the oil which we have used, uh, which we have produced from the germinated seed. So as we can see, the ratio of fatty acids does not change significantly. Also, content of the free fatty acids is pretty much the same, because even though we saw that a fatty acid is released from the TAG molecule, that free fatty acid is again used as a source of energy for the seed, so it can grow further. So this chemical parameter, which is very, very important for the food and cosmetics industry, is practically the same. So the oil has pretty much the same properties in terms of spectrum of different omegas as a regular hemp seed oil. But this small table here shows, after few hours intervals, how the content of DAG and MAG has developed. So, as we said, usually every seed contains some glycerides or monoglycerides, but as the germination starts, it progresses quite rapidly. But you have to know when to stop this process, because after about 30 hours, and that's general for flax, or pumpkin, or other oily seeds, more energy is needed for the seed, and it starts to consume its own fatty acids. And then the oil content goes down quite rapidly. And of course, when you want to process this seed for oil production, you don't want the oil content to go down. So you just have to know when to stop the germination, so enough fat has been converted chemically, but still, you don't lose the fat content. So that's a big trick. These hours are not real, of course. <laughs> They're just for the demonstration. And here comes the bank. I will first read my notes, not notes. Tocopherols have many biological functions the antioxidant function being the most important one. Other functions include enzymatic, uh, ac enzymatic activities, gene expression, and neurological functions. While alpha tocopherol inhibits the production of new free radicals, gamma tocopherol is required to trap and neutralize existing free radicals. Alpha tocopherol, also known as vitamin E, is the most biologically active form. It protects cell membranes from oxidation. And now, here we have a complicated chart with two axes. One is for the total of tocopherols and for gamma, because they are quite excessive. And this uh, axis, or 
yeah, is for alpha and, and delta. We can probably forget about delta, but let's talk about alpha, and gamma, and, sorry, I'm studying it away, and, and the total. So, we can see that when, when we take the regular hemp seed or regular cold-pressed, high-quality cold-pressed oil, total tocopherol content is about 800, 850 mi milligrams per kilogram. Alpha is the red one, starts at, this is the value, about 45 or, or, or 50. So see the rapid climb of alpha tocopherol to about 110. So actually I only got the results yesterday afternoon, believe me. Uh, so I was, uh, we had previous results, but this, this product is very, very unique, finally. So here we can see 130% growth. It's not like times 1.3, but times 2.3 of alpha tocopherol, which is vitamin A. And also the gamma tocopherol increases from like 800 to, uh, to from like 750 to 900. So the total tocopherol level is dramatically increased. I think this is one of the main benefits of using germinated hemp seed oil because it really protects your body from oxidation stress even more. So overall, the tocopherol positive shift is 30%. Of course, it probably depends from the batch to batch which, which seed you are, you are using. Uh, it can really vary. I mean, usually we can say that one 100 milliliters of regular hemp seed oil gives you 60% of daily intake of vitamin E. That's more or less true. But you should really check different, different oils and make the comparison. But usually 60% is sort of a benchmark. So with this oil, it's probably 80-85%. But sorry, I'm talking about vitamin E because this is also the misunderstanding. Usually people understand that it's all the tocopherol that are considered vitamin E. No, only alpha tocopherol is considered vitamin E by the food regulators. So here we can see 130% increase of alpha tocopherol. I think this is a very, very unique. So what are the future challenges? Because again, the development doesn't start here. Uh, sorry, it doesn't stop here where we are. With certain technology, we can increase the DAG content up to 70 or 75 percent. This has already been done with flax, flax seed, lean seed. This process requires a homogenization when cell structure gets broken down and the seed genetics does not control the fat hydrolysis anymore. So of course, if you just keep the seed germinating, it will eventually grow into a plant. That doesn't help you. But if you start the germination process, you practically blend it. The hydrolysis continues. So then we can create a stable emulsion with water molecules which are bonded chemically. So this is great for the cosmetics industry, for example. Or again, can you now imagine a sports performance gel based on emulsion made from DAG hemp oil? Thank you for your attention. <laughs>